Okay, Bear had forgot to take the vinegar and wipe the inside of the lid and wipe the mouth of the jars. This sterilizes them, cleans them. They already should be, but this is that last ditch before you seal it, you know, because you're going to put water in them here in a minute. Guess what I had not done yet. I know that, but you go ahead and put the lids on. That's fine. That way you can tell where you've been. I remember soaking the lids in vinegar before when you're doing a big production. Wasn't that a rite of passage? You had to dye um, Easter eggs for the younger kids in the vinegar. That was to train and see if you were safe enough to use in the canning process for doing lids and stuff, being around the vinegar. You didn't spill the vinegar and the dye, then you might be safe enough to help out with canning. Okay. He's making sure he's up to the fill line, which is the... I want about a head, an inch of head space. And that's a little short of an inch. But we're going to eat it anyway, so... Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what I have here is distilled water. Mm -hmm. um, Why use that instead of tap water? Tap water has a lot of things in it, a lot of calcium and other... You know, iron particles and stuff, particularly where we're at today feeds off of a well. There's no processing. It's straight out of the ground, straight into the faucet. And <clears throat> I thought that it would be good to use distilled water because the distilling process takes all those additives out so that we don't need them. But we're going to fill this up. to the fill line. If you would, grab that tamper. I outside. will. Now you want it filled up to that, what we're talking about the fill line, at the same time he wants it where there is a little bit of air space. And again, when you put the lids on, <clears throat> you don't want to do it more than just finger tight. Now, that may vary. Here you go. All right, thank you. Be right back. Okay, the water has filled in. There's no air, there's no air bubbles. <clears throat> air bubbles are not your friend. Now you can can the two different size jars at the same time. Yes. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the smaller ones on top of the larger ones. <coughs> I have already wiped all these jar necks all the mouths off before I seated the lids. <clears throat> all right. Turn it around to high. I've wiped the rain down with with oil to lubricate it. I wipe the lip of the of the pot down with oil to lubricate it. So what we have left is to line up this arrow with this arrow. Cam it closed. Count it closed. 
and then wait for it to build up. Mm -hmm. This is our vent. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is our emergency vent. Mm -hmm. If it gets up so high, it'll blow this little rubber button out and it'll vent. We're not going to let that happen. So while we're waiting for it, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to come up. Now, the water's already warm. Okay, the hot, the hot pipe got it warm, so we're ahead of the game. The jars are going to come up to temperature, and we're going to start venting steam here. When it starts to vent steam, we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And then we'll put the... the what we'll do rattler, it's around here. We'll find the rattler. Anyway, it goes on after 10 minutes, and then we'll let it cook for about 90. It'll be under pressure for about 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, we're going to turn it off. Just completely off. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to mess with the... Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to mess with the uh, jiggler, the rattler. We're not going to mess with anything. One thing that I did not remember was to add a couple of good glugs of vinegar to my water. That keeps the scale down. Now, because we weren't too far into the system, we're not behind anything. So, we're going to let this come up to pressure, let it vent for 10 minutes, and when it starts to vent, we'll be back and show you. Okay? Alright guys, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it. See any little see puffs of steam coming out? If you look out. right here, uh, yeah, there's little puffs of steam coming out. When that gets to be a steady stream of steam, we'll start the clock. <clears throat> you can see, I've already got my timer set, mm -hmm. and we'll be good to go. But we need a good strong column of steam coming up out of here. And when, when I do that, we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes. Then we're going to drop the rattler on board. And I'm going to turn the heat down to medium, and it's going, going to go for 90 minutes. All right, guys. See that good column of steam coming out there? We're almost home. We've got a minute and a half. And when that minute and a half gets here, <clears throat> I'm going to drop this rattler on top and we're going to walk away for, an hour, for 90 minutes. And after 90 minutes, I'm going to come in here and turn the heat off. We were building up for too much pressure a minute ago, so I had to come in and turn the heat down. All right. There we go. Now this is going to pop up and seal and it's going to start rattling okay you see it blowing a little steam around that one on the left you can see the steam coming right there this is the emergency blow that i was telling you about earlier when that thing pops duck mm -hmm. and the rattler should start making noise when the pressure gets to point x Ninety minutes. Mm-hmm. Go. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, what you're seeing right now is notice the little top is dancing. And you're hearing that little sound. That's what you want to hear. This one has popped up, which means the tank is now sealed. And now it's just the weight of that jiggler sitting there doing it. So it's doing its right thing. Now we've set the timer, and he's doing it for 90 minutes hour and a half that's how you do it okay guys we're gonna call it quits that we walked you through it's kind of long all the stages but process the meat process the vegetables like Baird talked about doing the vinegar and etc to seal it sanitize it got it into the canner got it up to temp let the 10 minutes go by Put the rattler on, it's now fully sealed and it's sitting there doing it. 
Matter of fact, you can hear the rattler right now. Yeah, it's a they're rattling. Hour and a half. We're going to lose daylight for reason we're going to cut this short. Yep. But the net on 51, when we get together, we'll bring out the completed jars and let you see what they look like. All that's going to happen now is, like you said, it's going to go hour and a half. Then you're going to turn the heat off, leave it sealed up, and let it just sit there overnight, completely cool everything down. And then he'll open it up tomorrow, pull out the jars, and he's good to go. Yeah. And... Uh, it's like I said. He's got to get home, and I, I'll I'll sit here for the, I'll be here for the next hour and a half, and in fifty one, mm -hmm. we will bring it back out and let you see what how what, how we did. Mm -hmm. uh, may yeah. even may even fix some and and let, let Blackie try it. Yeah, I mean, well, it it is when it comes out of here, it's going to be cooked. It's going to be cooked. It's cooked in the can. So it's not going to be raw meat or nothing. It's going to be a cooked meat and vegetables yeah. in that jar. You got to remember that water boils at 210, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 100 degrees centigrade. It's also under 10 pounds of atmospheric pressure. Now, right here at sea level, it's like one pound per square inch. Mm -hmm. That's under 10 pounds of pressure, so it's going to cook it. Yeah, it's, okay. going, it, it's going to put, by increasing the pressure, you lower the cook time and things cook quick, right. so to speak. That's the problem you got on the opposite end of that is at high altitude, it takes forever to cook something. That's why you use a different, a different weighted rattler. You're going to use the 15 pounds at higher elevations. Mm -hmm. um, that's just food safety. Mm -hmm. But um, that's what's coming up. And do we have anything else? Um, and then we're two weeks out from the Civil War. Like I've said in video, past videos, that's going to be a hoot. Yeah. And it's going. It, this is going to be a real busy spring to me because I do. We do the civil wolves, and then I got immediately. Just continuation, really, is my gathering for a week, and then I come home for just a week or so, and then the first weekend of May, I'm going to be in North Carolina at a big gathering up there, an expo, and then I come home, and the very next weekend I go to Ohio for the boot camp slash pathfinder gathering and then I get the rest. So it's gonna be a, a busy, busy spring for me. Yes it is. And that just gets you what to June? Yeah it gets me to June. <laughs> and then it'll be hot and we'll be doing <clears throat> stuff trying to not sweat. So well guys we appreciate y'all following along with us. And then like I said 51 we'll bring them out and we'll look at them a little more in depth once we get them cooked and ready to go. Um if you can find you one of these, the vacuum go sealer. Get the vac the miniature vacuum sealer. It's uh, well, I was trying to find out who sells them. Anyway, they're they're advertised on YouTube a lot. Get you one. It's worth the price of admission. So, and these jars, we did these jars, and we did three or four more over here that you can't that are off camera. But Blackie's gonna take these home for. And Mrs. Blackie. Yep, that'd be more enough meal for us. Take them out. They're, all, they're canned, they're safe, so it's got an almost infinite shelf life right now. Yep. Be sure that when you decide you're ready to use this, wash it. Yeah, wash the jar. Wash the yeah. outside of it. Yeah, wash it. And, and when you're ready to cook it, wash the beans. Let them soak. Let them soften up. Uh, hour or two yeah would probably be fine what i usually do is i'll take them out rinse them make sure they ain't no rocks or nothing and we had talked about this off camera do you want to go ahead and do that before you do it i don't uh, because it's already dry in the bag i just know i have not washed or cleaned them right. so when i get done canning them it's just like i pulled it out of this bag so I will wash it and clean it because if I wash it, I got to worry about now they're damp and I go to can yeah. it, they're not truly really dry. You, you don't want to can these wet 
you don't want to vacuum seal these wet because if you do, they're going to mold. Yeah. They're going to rot, and that's not good. No. So what we're doing is I just leave them dry and just realize when they come out of here, time to wash and clean them before I cook them. And my typical thing to do with uh, peas or something that's dry is I'll put them on and bring them to a good hard boil for like 10 minutes. And then I'll take them off the heat and just let them sit in that hot water for say 30, 40 minutes. And that only lets them swell up. And then I'll start cooking. If you do that, you'll, cook, you'll cut the cooking time in half. Better yet, I do it at night right before I go to bed, sit it and just let it cool. In the morning when I get up, then put it back on the fire, put it on medium heat, and let it start cooking and in like an hour, hour and a half, they're ready to go. Just until it's tender. Well guys, we're gonna cut it quits there because I gotta get going. Anything else, brother? We're done. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie. And Bear. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.